C-234. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Colleagues, I rise today to speak to Bill C-234. This is, in fact, the second speech that I have prepared for third reading. The first one was prepared right after the Chamber rightly rejected the report of the Agricultural Committee. At that point, I thought for a moment that sanity and soundness of mind might triumph over tribalism and pettiness in this Chamber. I was genuinely encouraged to see that the majority of Senators were prepared to consider this bill on its merits rather than through the narrow lens of unwavering loyalty to the Prime Minister. I am disappointed that I was wrong. After being lobbied by both the Minister of the Environment and the Prime Minister himself, 40 senators abandoned the facade of independence and returned to the Liberal fold. Here, here. If you object to this observation, colleagues, I would draw your attention to the fact that as this bill arrived in this chamber, Bill C-234 was contentious for only one reason. The Liberal Party opposed it. Their opposition was not because the bill contradicted their policies, they had already provided multiple exemptions to the carbon tax. Their opposition was not because the bill would impact the fight against climate change, because it will have no impact on emissions. Their opposition was not because there was uncertainty about the science behind the decision, because the science is solid. Their opposition was strictly political. It was a political calculation and an attempt to shore up their dwindling support base by acting tough on climate change when they were really just getting tough on farmers. This is what 40 senators voted in favor of when they supported Senator Delfon's amendment a few days ago. They voted in favor of the Liberal Party's political calculations rather than a clear case of common sense. Let's review the facts on why this bill was and is necessary in its unamended form. The carbon tax is designed as an incentive to shift consumption towards cleaner energy sources and more efficient energy use in order to mitigate climate change. This fact is not disputed. However, in order for the carbon tax to be successful in the shifting behavior of consumers, these, those consumers must have other options available. This fact is also not disputed. However, in agriculture, those options simply do not exist. This fact was confirmed by expert witnesses at committee and is not disputed by the Conservatives, the NDP, the Bloc, the Green Party, the Liberal Chair of the House of Commons Agricultural Committee, committee and farmers from every corner of the agricultural industry. You Democratic Party MP Elster McGregor put it this way. We realize that a price on carbon is there to incentivize a change in behavior, but it doesn't work very well if there aren't commercially viable alternatives available. This is Economics 101. A functioning market needs both supply and demand. The carbon tax on propane and natural gas for agricultural purposes attempts to create a demand for alternative energy sources for which there is no supply. This public policy, which is disconnected from reality, it is rooted in distorted ideology and political desperation, not science or concern for the climate. It will not achieve its stated purpose, and yet 40 senators are clinging to the liberal talking points blindly instead of considering the facts. Colleagues, I would not call that sober second thought. This means that imposing the carbon tax on farmers does only one thing. It drives up the costs. Where farmers are unable to pass on the carbon tax, such as in grain production, they must absorb these costs themselves. It comes directly out of their bottom line. The Bloc Quebecois were able to see the accuracy of this fact. Bloc MP Yves Perron said, without an alternative, if we impose a tax on these processes at this time, it would simply increase production costs and reduce farmers' profit margins since they have no other options. Where farmers find themselves in a position to pass on the increased cost, the higher price is simply passed on to consumers in the form of higher food prices. Because of this, the government acknowledged that farmers should be given relief from the carbon tax on diesel and gasoline, which included an exemption for these fuels. 
Later, the government also introduced a rebate for the carbon tax on, wait for it, propane and natural gas. Colleagues, let's be clear. Bill C-234 does not create a new exception to the carbon tax. It takes an existing one created by the Liberal government and makes it more equitable and efficient. All this bill does is transition the government's existing rebate for propane and natural gas into an exemption. I find it dumbfounding that critics of this bill have tried to make it sound like this bill punches a hole in the dike holding back climate change. Senator Maville Deschaines said on Tuesday night, if we start making exceptions to the carbon tax, it will never stop. Colleagues, I don't know if it was the lateness of the hour when the senator spoke, but she should have been aware that this bill does not start to make exceptions to the carbon tax. As I just said, exceptions already exist as part of the existing policy of this government, including an exception for propane and natural gas used for agricultural purposes. Here's what the government said when they announced the rebate on propane and natural gas in 2021 economic and fiscal update. Recognizing that many farmers use natural gas and propane in their operations and consistent with budget 2021 commitment, the government proposes to return fuel charges proceeds directly to farming businesses in backstop jurisdictions via a refundable tax credit starting in 2021-22 fuel charge year. Colleagues, the Liberal government does not oppose this bill for policy reasons. It opposes it for political reasons. They want to appear to be climate change champions when they have failed to meet every climate change target that they have set. And then after their disastrous mishandling of the carbon tax on home heating oil, they have now become desperate. They are champions only of the political fortunes of the Liberal Party, not good public policy, and they are prepared to achieve this on the backs of farmers. And this is what 40 senators voted for when they voted in favor of Senator Delfon's amendment against Bill C-234. They voted for the Liberal Party's phony talking points rather than for farmers. Colleagues, I sometimes feel I've been living through the Senate version of the movie 50 First Dates. I don't know if you've seen the movie. In case you haven't, let me explain. Adam Sandler plays Henry Roth, who falls in love with Lucy Whitmore, played by Drew Barrymore. Henry and Lucy hit it off, and Henry thinks he's finally found the girl of his dreams, until he discovers that Lucy has short-term memory loss and forgets him the very next day, and every day after that. <laughs> As a result, Henry has to win Lucy's heart and trust over and over and over because she doesn't remember him or a thing about their relationship the following day. This is what it must be like for farmers trying to get this bill through Parliament. They are forced to explain the same things over and over again because some senators seem to forget what they learned every time the sun goes down. I'll remind you that Senator Delfon's amendment, which was adopted by this chamber, was first introduced at committee. There it was deemed out of order by the chair because it contradicted the spirit of the bill. Undaunted by this ruling, the champions of procedure and fairness trampled all over the chair's ruling. With the help of the government itself through the office of Senator Gold, when Senator Labick and Benson joined the effort and voted against the chair, the amendment carried. Then when it came to this chamber at report stage, Senator Wu and Senator Delfont mounted a vigorous defense of the indefensible and lost. The report was rejected and the amendment defeated. For a moment, I was hopeful. But by that time, Senator Delfont stood to introduce the amendment in this chamber. The sun had set and risen again, and 40 senators seemed to have forgotten everything that had just happened. In the earlier vote on the report, Senators Kutcher, Melville Deschain, and Simons all abstained. But when we voted on the amendment, they decided to defeat the bill by supporting the amendment. Senators White, McAdam, and Beam voted against the committee report and helped to defeat it in order to save the bill. And then they flip-flopped and voted in favor of the amendment. Must have been quite a conversation with the Prime Minister. 
This amendment was clearly out of order, and I noted the fact in this chamber. So much for sober second thought. <coughs> Colleagues, this bill is no ordinary piece of legislation. It has brought together the agricultural sector in a way that I have never seen. You may not be aware of this, but the agricultural sector is not some hom homogeneous industry which sees things the same way and sticks together through thick and thin. It is incredibly diverse, not just in activity and focus, but in beliefs, values, and convictions. You see this constantly in debates over agricultural issues, and perhaps none more so than the decades-long debate over the monopoly of the Canadian Wheat Board. It is not unusual in the ag community to be of different mindsets. It is a very diverse community where some farmers believe they need protection from big corporations. Some believe they need protection from big governments. They rarely agree on anything politically until Bill C-234. Multiple farm leaders told me they have never seen the agricultural community come together over an issue like they have united around Bill C-234. Two years ago, 10 farm organizations agreed they had to work together for all farmers to advocate for the constructive and evidence-based policies regarding carbon pricing offsets, retrofit funding, and related environmental policies. The funding groups included the Canadian Canola Growers Association, Canadian Federation of Agriculture, Canadian Cattlemen's Association, Canadian Growers of Canada, Canadian Pork Council, Egg Farmers of Canada, Chicken Farmers of Canada, Turkey Farmers of Canada, Canadian Horticultural Council, and Canadian Hatching Egg Producers. They called themselves the Agricultural Carbon Alliance, and within a few months, the coalition had grown to include Fruit and Vegetable Growers of Canada, Canadian Forage and Grassland Association, National Sheep Network, National Cattle Dealers Association, Dairy Farmers of Canada, Canadian Seed Growers Association, and Mushrooms Canada. Overall, the combined membership encompasses all major agricultural commodities and represents 190,000 farm businesses that steward 65 million hectares and are speaking with one voice on this important issue. Although the Alliance is not the only ag voice speaking on this, it illustrates the incredible unity in the agricultural industry over this bill. These are the people that 40 senators voted against when they chose knowingly to defeat this legislation by amending it. Senator Simon, Lebeck and Benson chose to vote against Alberta farmers and ranchers. Ontario Senators Beam, Cardozo, Clement, Dasco, Dean, Harder, Lankin, Monsion, Moody, Amundvar, Pate, and Yusuf all voted against the 39,000 farm families who belong to the Ontario Federation of Agriculture. Senator Yusuf argued last week that if an amendment was considered and rejected at committee, that is a reason not to pass it at third reading, and yet he did not hesitate to support an amendment that had already been rejected at report stage. Quebec Senators Odette, Belmar, Delfon, Dupuis, Forte, Yerba, Gold, Lafreda, Massacot, Meiji, Mivildershade, Petitclerc, and St. Germain all stood against the clear wishes of the Quebec Supply Management Sector to not amend this bill including the Dairy Farmers of Canada, Chicken Farmers of Canada, Turkey Farmers of Canada, Egg Farmers of Canada, and the Canadian Patching Egg Producers. Senator Patton and White voted against all the farmers in Newfoundland and Labrador, including dairy, chicken, eggs, greenhouse, nursery, and vegetable producers. Senator Onzio, Cordy, Coyle, Cousiner, and Kutcher voted against the farmers of Nova Scotia, which includes horticulture, dairy, poultry, eggs, livestock, and more. Senator McAdams stood to vote against the agricultural industry of Prince Edward Island, which, despite being called a rock, is over 42 percent farmland, including potatoes, grains, oilseeds, vegetable, fruit production, beef and dairy, hogs, poultry, and more. According to Senator Ringette, 99 percent of farming production in New Brunswick is potato, but in reality, Senator Ringette and her colleagues, Senator Cormier, Hartley, Kingston, and McNair voted not only against the province's 111 potato farms, they voted against 344 beef cattle farms, 319 fruit and berry farms, 232 hay farms, 162 dairy farms, 53 poultry and egg farms, 43 oilseed grain farms, 
33 sheep, sheep and goat farms, five mushroom farms, and more than, and according to the 2021 New Brunswick Census of Agriculture. Furthermore, while Senator Ringette correctly pointed out that New Brunswick farmers do not use natural gas, she neglected to note they do use propane and will now be paying a carbon tax on that fuel thanks to their support of the amendment. I am proud to note that every senator who voted from the Yukon, Nunavut, British Columbia, Saskatchewan, and Manitoba all voted in support of Canadian farmers. Colleagues, farmers, growers, and ranchers contribute $135 billion to our gross domestic product every year and provide one in nine Canadian jobs. While producing the food that feeds Canada and the world, they are also providing meaningful, meaningful climate change solution as stewards of 154 million acres of land across Canada. Their climate change efforts have resulted in a 50% decrease in greenhouse gas emissions intensity from 1987 to 2017. Farmers are committed to feeding Canadians and to fighting climate change, and Bill C-234 would have helped them do so. Regrettably, the likelihood of this bill passing is now very difficult. I would like to close by thanking everyone who supported this bill in its original form. It took courage for many of you to take a different position than that of your colleagues and that of your Prime Minister. And I know that producers of every major agricultural commodity across the country appreciate your efforts. And to the farmers in Canada, please don't lose hope. Although this bill is now on a trajectory to possibly languish in the other place, as soon as Canadians elect a common sense conservative government under the great leadership, <coughs> under the great leadership of our leader, Pierre Polya, we will affirm your significant contributions to fighting climate change and pass policies which will strengthen your hands and your industry instead of weakening them the way this incompetent liberal government has done and continues to do. Thank you, Cole. Here, here.